بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we beseech Him, we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evilness of our deeds and actions. Whoever Allah has guided them, there's no one to mislead them. And whoever He has led astray, there's no one to guide them. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. He is one and He doesn't have any partners. As I bear witness that Muhammad is His worshiper and His final messenger. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. As for what follows, for inna astaq al hadith, for indeed the most truthful of all speech, Kitabullah is the book of Allah. Wa khayl al hadi and the best guidance, Hadi Muhammadin, is the guidance of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sharr al umur and the most evilest of affairs, Muhdathatuha, are newly introduced affairs into the religion. Wa kulla muhdathatin bid'ah, every newly introduced affairs into this religion is a bid'ah, is an innovation. Wa kulla bid'atin dalala, and every innovation is misguidance. Wa kulla dalalatin finnar. And all misguidance is in the hellfire. May Allah protect us from the hellfire. Hajj, alhamdulillah, as we talked about before when we had this class, Ruknun, it is a pillar from the pillars of Al Islam. We all know this. Hajj is a pillar from the pillars of Islam in which Allah, an obligation from the obligations of Allah Ta'ala upon us that is established its obligation in the book of Allah and in the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the book of Allah Allah mentions in surah Ali Imran surah chapter Ali Imran verse number 97 Allah ta'ala says wa lillahi ala nasi hijjul bayt man istata'a ilayhi sabila and is due to Allah it is due to Allah, it is a right of Allah over mankind that they make pilgrimage to the house. Man istata'a ilayhi sabira, who's ever able to do so financially and physically. He has he's able to go that pathway. Woman kafara, and whoever disbelieves, meaning in this obligation of Hajj, for in Allah Alameen. Indeed Allah is free of all that which exists. Indeed Allah is free of the needs of all that which exists. Clear ayah. And the Prophet Sallallahu says in the Hadith in Muslim, Ayyuhannas, O mankind. قَدْ فَرَضَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ الْحَجَّ فَحُجُّوا And O mankind, Allah has truly obligated upon you hajj, so make pilgrimage, so make hajj. Hadith by Muslim. And this hadith is authentic. And the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, made clear its obligation. The companion Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu an, in a hadith, that is a narration that is sahih, it's authentic, that go to Umar. That he said about the person who has not made hajj and he has the finances. He has the capability to make hajj and he does not or she does not. He says, Man ataqa al hajj who ha has the ability to make hajj. Walam and he doesn't make hajj. Fasawa'un alayhi. He said, it doesn't matter what, he will die as a Jew and he will die or he will, or if he die as a Christian. Meaning, he won't die as a Muslim. Whoever has the financial ability to make hajj and they do not do it. That he's saying here that that person is not a, is, will die as a non-Muslim. 
And that's in congruence and agreement with the statement of Allah, وَمَنْ كَفَرَ That whoever disbelieves, whoever disbelieves, meaning the obligation of Hajj, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Indeed, Allah is free from all that which exists. Allah is free of the needs of all that which exists. Meaning, everything other than Allah, Allah is free from it. That's alameen. Al-alameen is everything other than Allah. Everything other than Allah. Allah is Rabbul Alameen. The Lord of all that which exists. Now, barakallahu fiku. So this statement of Omar is powerful. In another version, he said, Wallahi, he's not a Muslim. Wallahi, he's not a Muslim. Wallahi, he's not a Muslim. That's what Umar, radiallahu anhu, said. And it's a consensus, an agreement, an ijma' that is established in this religion about the obligation of hajj. And that is a pillar of Islam. And that it is obligatory to make hajj upon the one who's capable. As we quoted earlier, the ayah. And belong and is due to Allah, the right of Allah over mankind is to make pilgrimage to the house. <coughs> who is able to do so. Who is able to go to that path. And that is because... He's capable with his body. He has the provisions <coughs> to take that journey. And Wajidan, he's present. And he's upon safety and security to make Hajj. There's nothing of danger for him to take the journey. Hajj becomes obligatory. He can't avoid. He must rush to do the Hajj if he has the finances. Even if he's in debt. Even if he has debt, he just seek permission of the people he makes, he owes debt to. Can he make hajj and pay them when he come back? If Allah allows him to come back and he sets up with his family to handle his debt if he dies like this. So this is a serious act from the. So that's hajj and hajj. The ulama. Says it's obligatory add the obligation becomes upon the woman if she has a mahram. Someone who can go water from amongst the males of her family. From the virtues of hajj and its goal and objectives. Yani min fada'il al-hajj wa ahdafi. From the virtues of hajj and its, oblig and its goals, its objectives. What is the objectives of hajj and the virtues of hajj? That's important to know. For hajj are tremendous virtues. That the texts... Of the Quran and the Sunnah, the Kitab and Sunnah has clarified its virtue. And the Prophet, وسلم, the first thing, as we talked about before, that it Hajj wipes away anything that came before it. What well, that the Prophet وسلم, made clear to us, Hajj wipes away anything that came before it of sins and disobedience, right? Just like Al Islam. Wipes away shirk and kufr. Hajj also wipes away shirk and kufr that one may have. The proof of that is the hadith of Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu. He said, فَلَمَّا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ الْإِسْلَامِ This is Amr ibn al-As. Pay attention what he says. He says, فَلَمَّا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ الْإِسْلَامَ فِي قَلْبِ He said, when Allah had placed Islam in my heart. When Allah placed Islam in my heart. أَتَيْتُ النَّبِيَّ I came to the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Faqultu So I said to him Ubusut yameenak He told the Prophet Put out his right hand Stretch out his right hand Why did he say that? He says Fala ubayi'uka So I can give pledge of allegiance Y'all know what bay'ah is? When you put your hand into the hand of the ruler And you are pledged to hear and obey them To listen and obey the ruler this is what he was doing because the Prophet was the ruler of the Muslims. So he stuck his hand out, said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, stick your hand out, stretch your hand out, so I can truly pledge allegiance to you. So the Prophet stretched out his hand. Now pay attention. Amr ibn al As said to the Prophet, or oh, he said to the Prophet, Now before we say this, a lot of the people who took their shahada during the time of the Prophet, Especially in once he migrated to Medina. Once he made hijrah to Medina. Many of the people will make bay'ah, pledge of allegiance, while taking a shahada. And this is what Amr ibn al-As was coming to do. So when he did that, 
he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, فَقَبَضْتُ يَدِي, يَدِي He said, I grabbed my own hand. When he went, the Prophet went to put his hand in, he grabbed his own hand to stop the Prophet from grabbing it. And when he did that, the Prophet said to him, مَا لَكَ يَا عَمْرُ He said, what's wrong with you, Amr? Why did you pull your hand back? After you asked me to stretch my hand out, to give Pledge of Allegiance, to take the Shahada, you grabbed your hand. Kabuki, like he went like this. He grabbed his hand back not to give. It's like you walk up to me, I say, put your hand out. And you go to put your hand out, I put my hand out. And when you go to grab it, I pull it back. I pull it back. So the Prophet said, Malaka, Ya Amr, what's wrong with you, Amr? Why did you do that? Amr Qala, he said, I said to the Prophet, Aradtu an ashtariqa. He said, I want to make a condition. Meaning for giving the Pledge of Allegiance and taking the Shahada. He said, I want to make a condition. Qala, tashtari to be mother. He said, what do you want to make a condition with? What's the condition you want to make? He said, Qultu. Amr said, now this is to be Muslim. And to and yugfar ali. That I be forgiven. That I be forgiven before I take my when I take my shahada. That's the condition I have. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him, "Ama alimta an al Islam yahdi mu ma kana qablu." He said, "Did you not realize that al Islam destroys and wipes away anything that came before it?" Wa an al hijra ta tahdi mu ma kana qablu, and that making hijra. Destroys and wipes away anything that happened before the hijrah. And hajj wipes away and removes any wrong and sins you did before it. Narrated by Muslim. So this is one of the virtues and goals of hajj. This is why you should save your money. Put money to a side to make the hajj brothers. And so here from the virtues of hajj also is that the one who makes hajj, he returns back. Like the day his mother gave birth to him. Y'all know the hadith of Abu Huraira where the Prophet said, Whoever make hajj, for men hajj, whoever make hajj, to have the bait to this house. And he does not argue and fight or have sexual intercourse. And he doesn't do acts of disobedience to Allah's messenger. He will return back like the day his mother gave birth to him. We narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. Also, in this hadith, that also we know, thirdly, the, from the virtues of Al-Hajj, the third virtues of Hajj, is that Hajj is a form of jihad. Hajj is a form of jihad. It's a type of jihad, fighting jihad. And that is, it is the best form of, of jihad. Did y'all know that? Hajj is from the best form, the best types of jihad. And that is from the hadith of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. Bismillah. This is from the hadith of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. She said, Qalat. Qultu, I said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Tara al-jihad afdal al-a'mal. You know that hajj, you see that hajj is the best deed that you can do. Afala nujahid, don't we women fight jihad too? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La, no. Walakin, Afdalu Jihad, the best jihad, Hajjun Mabrur, is a righteous accepted Hajj. That's the best jihad. Why is that a jihad, y'all think? Let me, let's interject and get y'all to, why do you think making Hajj is, a, is one of the best forms of jihad? What does the word jihad mean? And why do you think Hajj is the best form of jihad? Anybody can answer that? Sacrifice. What sacrifice you? He said it's a sacrifice. What sacrifice you making? Sacrificing your money, sacrificing your time, sacrificing your strength. Like you have energy. You yeah, you sac you're making a sacrifice. Not just that, you're struggling against your desires. You're struggling against disobedience. You're struggling against the easiness of anger and rage. Because when you are hot, people are going to get you angry. 
<laughs> right? They're going to say things and do things that it makes you want to hurt them. Especially if you're trying to get to the black rock and kiss it. And not her arm somebody. You got to fight against yourself to get to it without pushing, shoving, and striking. You have to be patient if somebody hits you. You got to carry that burden. Because of what the prophet said. So this is a struggle. And it teaches you life lessons. And this hadith is narrated by Muslim. Number four. From the virtues of Hajj. Is that being granted success upon the highest thing that is sought. Which is the highest thing that we can ever seek? Anybody know? What's the greatest deed, the thing that we can seek and try to... Yeah, yes. No. The Jannah. The Jannah. But greater than the Jannah is seeing Allah's face. Allah being pleased with us. But he, what we talk about here is seeking the Jannah. Because that comes with seeing Allah's face. Right? And that's from the hadith of Abi Huraira who he said that the Messenger of Allah said, Al Hajj al Mabrur, the accepted Hajj, the righteous Hajj, Laysa lahu jaza'u illa Jannah. It has no reward other than paradise. When we hear this hadith of the Prophet that's narrated by Muslim, the first thing should come to your mind what is Hajj al Mabrur? What is an accepted Hajj? It's a Hajj that is according to what the Prophet has legislated. You followed everything he commands you to do, right? That's the accepted hajj. So that requires knowledge. Hadith narrated by Muslim. Hajj has goal, tremendous goals too. It has tremendous objectives. From them, number one is that hajj is imtithalun li amrila. It is implement, it is complying to the commandment of Allah. It is implementing and living and trying to follow and imitate the commands of Allah wa ta'ala. Hajj. It is also It is responding to the call and, and That Allah is making for the Hajj When you make it You're responding to Allah's call for the Hajj And Hajj is also In this response that you make You're complying to You show sincere obedience to Allah It becomes apparent When you make the Hajj even you, when you make Hajj, you feel like a stronger believer. You ever notice that everybody in this room made Hajj before? Everyone? Umrah. Similar. Or Hajj or Umrah. Umrah is nothing but a lesser form of Hajj. When you go there, you feel now you have become stronger as a believer. Especially when you see Mahdatul Wahi, the place where the revelation came down. Your confidence grows. You feel like a stronger believer. And with your people, you're honored more. Because of that sacrifice. So Hajj, one of his goals, you're responding. You're making apparent your sincere obedience to Allah. And you're showing the truthfulness of your Islam. You know what I'm saying? Secondly, from the goals and objectives of the Hajj, is that in it is you now begin to have a connection to the spirit of the revelation. What do we mean by that? When you go there and you get to see what you read about. This is the station of Ibrahim. You touch the Kaaba. You go to about Uhud. You go to the places where incidents took place. You see the cave of Hira. You see Minna, you see Muzdalifa, you see Arafah. You see these things that you read about. So you have now a connection to the spirit of revelation. You have a connection with that what you don't have if you've never seen it and you've never been there. Anybody that has been there, you feel that. That's why the scholars say when you make Hajj or Umrah, it increases you in Iman. Just seeing the place of revelation. You get to see the place where incidents took place. The prophet was here. This incident, he go to the You know, you get to see so much. Also, وَكُلَّ مَا رُتَّبَ الْطَالِ الْمُسْلِمُونَ بِتِلْكَ بِقَعَ الْطَاهِرَ Sheikh the Sheikh Rasulullah, he says that every single time the Muslim has this connection in that pure place. 
كانوا أقرب إلى الرعيل الأول. They feel closer to the first generation. You feel closer to that first generation, especially when you go and find out this is where the Prophet Ibn Mas'ud, when the Messenger of Allah asked him to recite to him, like I saw that place. This is where it took place at. You feel closer to them. They become more real for you, and once they become more real, you imitate and follow them more. You understand? You see the grave of the Sahaba. All of these things brings you closer to that first generation. Those who we know strove hard and made jihad in the path of Allah and the ones who conveyed to us this legislation. Number three, in the Hajj, number three of his goals and objectives, that in the Hajj is an announce is a, a physical announcement. The Mabda il Musawati Bainanas. For the beginning stages of cooperation and working together, the beginning stages of working together with the Muslims. Yes, we hear in the masjid that we work together to make the deen be established. But when you make hajj, y'all have to work together to make that hajj be successful. It is required of the believers. So the hajj is the beginning stages of teaching you how to do that. Right? And that is when you the people stand all together in the one place in Arafah Everybody there This You have to cooperate with one another When you're on Arafah And everybody you, you, you go to Arafah When you arrive there in the morning time When the sun come up You have to stay there Until the sun set Making dua All day In the heat You're supposed to make dua all day and pray Right there on Arafah I don't know if whoever made Hajj, that's a trip. You, you run out of du'as to say. You run out of supplications. So you come with your book, just make your du'a. Because wallahi, I've never made Hajj, except everything I asked for in Arafah was answered. I don't know if y'all experienced that before. So being on that Arafah, on your day on Arafah, there's no distinction from you and everyone else there. Every, all the men is dressed the same. The doctor, the plumber, the dignitary. No matter who you are, you're all dressed the same. Which teaches us the only one who's best amongst us is the one who has the best taqwa. Right? So this is what happens with how to teach you how to, the equality between people. We're equal. There's an equality. Musawa, there's an equal, there's an equality between you and the people. You begin to forget when you home, right? And the brother pulls up in that nice car, got a beautiful wealth, and you pull up in your bad car. These times you may feel something about that. But when you there on Hajj, no. He got to do the same thing you got to do. He has to worship the same way you have to worship. He's dressed the same way you're dressed. He can't make you go before him or after him. You become equal. So you see equality. And this is one of the objectives of, of the Hajj, to see your equality and your humanity. And only the best of you is the one who possessed the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is begin the stages of ta'ar, of getting to know one another. You meet new people. You may build new relationships when you make Hajj. You begin to have mutual cooperation with your brothers there. And you, you have relations. Like I have friends that I made Hajj with. Every time I see them, that's my Hajj buddy. And we have a, a relationship and a connection with one another. We helped each other on the Hajj. Also, حَيْثُ يَقْوَى تَعَارُ That you find that that going to know one another be, becomes stronger. That relationship. And your mutual cooperating with one another becomes stronger. I have relationships that I still have to this day with the people I made hajj with. And I've done things with those brothers and those families that I made hajj with that I didn't do before the hajj after the hajj because of the relationship that was developed that the sheikh is mentioning here. And that is, is what awakens the ummah and raises the status of this nation. When the kuffar see us come together like that. They hate that. The Jews hate to see the Muslims on that hajj. There's no place that people gather like in numbers. And that great numbers like the gathering on the hajj. And umrah. And, Rama, and, 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 and making the umrah. And in the last, in the, uh, and, and when we're on the hajj. 
No, no place gathers that many people. You will never see that on the news here. Nobody gathers that many people like we do. Everybody doing the same thing on the same day, spending the same time. It's an amazing trip, man. It's an amazing experience that teach you a level of brotherhood. Well, I'm going to share one experience. I remember when I first went there, I had gotten to the Hurum early, late at night. I had caught a bus from Egypt. I mean, I took a boat from Egypt, three-day boat ride to Mecca, to, to Judah. When I got there, I had jumped in a cab and drove all the way to the Kaaba. And when I got there, it was like one or two in the morning. And when I got there, the people was making, making when they went to, excuse me, we went to make the prayer of Thor later on that day. I had spent the night and I made, to, my first thing I did was make my Umrah. And when we came back the next day to pray Thor, I went, I got in the masjid, you know, when you're in Mecca, you try to get to the masjid early if you want to get inside the masjid. And so I'm in there, but I had to go to the bathroom. So you got to go out. Then when I went back there, this is 1995, you had to go out to go to the bathroom out of the masjid. And so when I hurried up, made Wulu come back, I was caught in the middle of the street, away from the masjid. And the ikama was being called. And as I'm trying to get, the people started praying. Now, I didn't say Allahu Akbar yet. Because I was still trying to get through to get in. But I realized I could not go past the people. So we prayed with the masjid from outside. Akhi, ikhwa. When they called the... When everybody went to make rukuwa. And then go down to sujood. I was in the salah. When we went to make sujood, I, for some reason, I can't remember why, I didn't just go right away to go make sujood. And when I went to make sujood, I stopped and I looked all around. And all I could see is people prostrate. I couldn't see the street no more. There was no street. It was just people praying. In front of me, next to me, behind me. I had to start my prayer. But I was like, I could, I've never seen nothing like that before. So that amazed me. Can't even see the ground. You just see people praying. So the Hajj, it makes you see the greatness of Islam. And inshallah, we're going to close with this point. The legal verdicts about the Hajj and its benefits and its pillars. Allah Ta'ala, He says, Verily, this is in Surah Al-Ali Imran, verse 96 and 97. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, the first house that was placed for mankind, for worshipping Allah, is truly the one that was in Bekka. Bekka was the original name of Mecca. Bekka. That it turned, was changed to Mecca. Allah Ta'ala says, Verily the first house that was placed for mankind for worship truly was the place in Becca. Mubarakan, it is blessed. Wahudan and a guidance. Lil Adameen for all the world. Fihi ayatum in it, in this place in Becca, this house, are clear signs. Meaning of guidance, clear signs of religion, right? Maqamu Ibrahim, the station of Ibrahim. Whoever enters that house, he will be safe. He will have be safe and secure. And we'll lie, that's what you feel when you go there, right? When you go there, you feel that safety and that security. And Allah Ta'ala then says, What is that the eye that we begin with? And for Allah, it is due to Allah over mankind, Hijjul Bayti Manistata'a ilayhi sabila, to make pilgrimage to the house for those who are able, right? To go that pathway. Woman kafara, whoever disbelieves, for inna Allah ghaniyunil alameen. Allah is free of the needs of all that which exists. Ali Imran, verse 96 and 97. Sheikh Sa'di says about this verse, and this is what we're going to close with. Sheikh Sa'di says about this verse. Yukhbiru ta'ala bi azamati bayti al haram. That Allah the Exalted is informing about the magnificence of his sacred house. 
وأنه أول البيوت التي وضعها الله في الأرض لعبادته ولإقامة ذكره and that the first homes are houses of worship in which Allah has placed them in the earth for his worship and for the establishment of his remembrance is that is the house of Mecca and that in it are is much blessings and many types of guidance that you benefit from when you come there and he says, Sheikh Sirdi, there's all types of benefits for all the world. Something in abundance and many tremendous virtues. And in that house, in the Kaaba, are clear signs of the magnificence of Allah's deen. To that kiru. Ibrahim. Those clear signs makes it reminds you of the station and status of Ibrahim, Al Khalil, the close friend of Allah, or fil Hajj and the places he traveled to while in the Hajj. And after him, the places that the Kaaba it reminds you of the station of the leader of the prophets and messengers and what imam him and their leader their imam Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa fihi al-amn that we find in that house safety and security alladhi man dakhalahu kana amina that whoever enters that house he feels safety and security qadaran meaning from Allah's decree, he decreed, you feel it. He feels safety and security in his physicality, in his body, and he feels safe to he practice his deen in that house. You feel the comfort of that, right? Sheikh Sa'di says, in his religion and in his legislation. He said, once a person absorbing, stick, hold firm, and inculcate or understand these affairs, that once a person know the details of this and they they see this beauty right they'll know the sum of it the all of the virtues of this house when you go there right he says that's why Allah has made making Hajj to his house obligatory upon those who have the capability مستطيعين, who are able to take on that charge to go to that path. That person is capable to travel and can reach that place by any means of travel that is unasibuhu, that is suitable for him. Wazadin and provisions, yet the zawadu that he can use for provisions to go. For this reason, walihada atta bihada laf. So that reason, Allah came with these words of the obligation. Of making a hajj and it's the right of Allah upon mankind to make pilgrimage to the house. That's why Allah used that wording because he left it open to use whatever means. Back then it was how did they travel there? Donkey, horse, walk, right? Ship. Now we fly with airplanes. And one of the virtues of that during the prime of the Prophet وسلم, and the Sahabas and the many generations before because of hajj don't you know the Muslims were the first people to make the map of the world? Because of Hajj. They would pack up their bags, prepare that journey, and they had to take it by foot. It may take them months to get there. And on that journey, they had to write a map to get there so they know how to go back home. And that's how we were one of the first people to write the world map. Because of people coming on Hajj. You see? So these things, Allah has legislated this Hajj for all of these benefits. He's saying. So this is why the wording that Allah brings is general. To come to the house. To make pilgrimage by any means that is allowed for you to make. Right? He said Allah used a type of wording that you can implement that wording on all forms of traveling. Al hadha is current. Al atisa tahdu and what's going to come in the future? Because we, inshallah, we may have flying cars in the future. Brother, jump in his car and <laughs> go to Mecca. <laughs> that may happen. Allah knows best. 
And Sheikh Sa'di says, وَهَذَا مِنْ آيَاتُ الْقُرْآنِ These, this is from the signs and verses of the Qur'an. حَيْثُ كَانَتْ أَحْكَامُهُ صَالِحًا Where we find that the legal verdicts in this religion is very beneficial and suitable. لِكُلِّ زَمَانِ For every time. وَكُلِّ حَالًا Under any condition. وَلَا يُمْكِنُ الصَّلَاحُ التَّامِ بِدُونِهَا That there is no way possible to have perfect benefit Outside of this religion Every other form of benefit is going to be partial But Islam provides these great benefits And whoever yields himself and humbles himself to these rules and legislations of Allah And he established them He will be of, of the guided And of the true believers And Allah says at the end of that verse And whoever disbelieves in this obligation He doesn't Adhere to the obligation of making Hajj to the house, in other words, when you have the means, but who are Sheikh he has removed himself from his religion. How many Muslims have the ability to make the Hajj and they don't take advantage of it? And he says, That's why Allah says, And whoever disbelieves in his obligation, for indeed Allah is free from all that which exists. So this is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why Allah says وَأَتِمُّ الْحَجَّ وَالْعُمْرَةَ لِلَّهِ and complete the pilgrimage and the minor pilgrimage umrah for Allah like this has tremendous benefits and with that inshallah we come to a conclusion to our presentation of the iman that is in that journey that we take and here we not on hajj this is encouragement for those to put their monies Wallahi brothers you hear brothers say I can't make the Hajj. I never made the Hajj. But wallahi, we got the money. If you take $5 every day and put it to the side for the Hajj, 365 days times five is how much? Can anybody tell me? Come on, check it out on your mathematics. Do your math on your calendar. $1,700. $1,700? $1, Eighteen hundred and twenty-five. I'm just saying five dollars a day. How long it take you to be ready for the Hajj? Ten years? Yes. Something like that, or seven years? Eight years. Eight years. How many we we've been Muslim only eight years? It's all about planning, because and being sincere to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and putting that money to the side. It's possible, brothers. I've seen it. I've seen a brother who was a janitor with a family save the money to make hajj. It took him a while. It took him a while. But this is how we have to go. We have to do. We have to plan and strive for this. But hearing stuff like this should inspire you to make those type of efforts, you know? May Allah bless all of you, brothers, for your efforts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let us truly understand the statement of Allah. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا And it is due right to Allah over mankind to make pilgrimage to the house for the one who has the capability to take that path. Allahumma ameen. May Allah bless us to understand that and prepare to see that beautiful house so we can increase in iman and confidence and trustworthiness upon the deen of Allah. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم